feeding opportunities in developed and developing countries differ slightly. This is true in particular for preterm and small for gestational age infants who are in the newborn nursery. You in the Tigerberg Hospital in South Africa have a bunch of uh, newborns uh, who come from mothers who are HIV positive, so you have very specific conditions. Uh, how do you handle your infants who are low, below 34 gestational weeks in terms of nutrition? I think the, the, the most important thing is that you should not separate the mother and the baby. You can't be successful in feeding these babies uh, in the absence of the mother. Uh, and therefore it's a priority to have larger facilities for the mothers to stay in hospital with these babies and they are there until the babies are discharged with them home. And secondly, um, the mothers must be trained in expressing of breast milk as soon as possible after delivery. And uh, any expressed colostrum is immediately administered to these babies. The prevention of infection in these overcrowded wards is as important as nutrition of these babies. If a baby now has uh, less than 1500 grams, it doesn't suck. So how do you give uh, enteral nutrition to them? Uh, how do you continue when the baby is uh, leaving the hospital, approximately 18, 1900 grams? A nasogastric tube is placed on admission uh, to these babies. Initially, the breast milk is, uh, express breast milk is given by a nasogastric tube. The colostrum is given orally. We use a syringe uh, and it's slowly administered at, at the back of the throat, even though the babies are on CPAP or nasal cannula oxygen. And the reason for that is uh, the uh, lymphocytes uh, attached to the mucosa of the uh, oropharynx and we think it, there is some evidence that it may prevent the uh, migration of bacteria down to the gut. Um, the mothers practice breastfeeding with these babies with intermittent kangaroo mother care. Even though baby weighs 1,200 grams, she will sit there for hours. She will put the baby on the breast. The nipple contact will induce a lay down reflex. She will express breast milk directly uh, into the mouth of the baby and slowly but surely she will teach that baby to breastfeed and even though he may weigh 1200 grams um, at birth or have a gestational age of 30 weeks many of them by 33 32 33 weeks can suckle from the breast but we know they don't empty the breast and that's why expressing is so important that the mother will express immediately after this partial breastfeeding and give the feed by cup. Now you have this situation that the, uh, the mothers who are HIV positive are on medications. How do you handle this in terms of breastfeeding? Is there no problem? You just neglect it? And how are the infants then treated when the mother is HIV positive? Uh, in South Africa fortunately now at heart, um, highly active antiretroviral therapy uh, is commenced at 13, 14 weeks gestation, uh, pregnancy duration. It's an advantage for the HIV antiretrovirals that are uh, excreted through breast milk. The babies are commenced on nevirapine as a single medication immediately after birth. But even if they have 800 grams? Or even nine? if they have 800 grams, the first thing they get uh, once the nasogastric tube has been placed is the first dose of nevirapine and they get that daily and they will continue with that until uh, the age of three months. The mother will continue with heart indefinitely and that's why now mothers can breastfeed for long periods of time and we know we've been monitoring it that the uh, HIV transmission rate has now the last time that I looked at it in very low birth weight infants it was around two percent and I've no doubt within a year or two with more mothers commencing heart at 13 weeks 
we will approach uh, transmission rates comparable to first world countries. One last question, uh, breastfeeding at home. You, you are propo uh, proposing that the milk has to be heat treated. How are doing mother this yeah. at home? Well, I, uh, it is put to the mother that if she has the facilities to continue with pasteurization at home, she can do that. They well trained uh, in you know in doing pasteurization. All she needs is a hot plate and uh, a pot, and they know exactly how to use uh, the. Uh, flash method of pasteurization. It's very, very Tell easy. Tell us about the flash method. A lot of people in developed countries do not know because when it comes to pasteurization, there's a standardized process. This differs. Basically, you need a pot that's, uh, that can contain fi 500 mils of water. Mm -hmm. uh, the mother expresses between 50 to 150 mils of breast milk into a wide room glass containing bottle. Um, the, we put the cap on the bottle. It's placed in the uh, pot with cold uh, water. And to prevent the falling over of the pot during uh, the boiling of the water, we put another, add, uh, put another uh, milk bottle on top of the one with the milk in. You switch the uh, plate on and basically it takes three and a half minutes for the water to get to a rolling boil. And the moment you observe that the water is now boiling, you remove the uh, pot from the stove and you remove the uh, bottle with milk from and the water. And with this method, 100% right of the HIV oh, virus are killed. This has been well validated, okay. well validated. But the important thing is it must be done correctly. And the important thing to remember is is not to remove uh, the pot from the stove until the, you, the water is at a rolling boil. And we usually leave it for another 10, 15 seconds just to make sure that it's boiling well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you.